our third graduate student mentee awardee is Carla Sosa, PhD candidate in biology. And she will be introduced by Anita Simha, PhD student in ecology. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to be introducing Carla Sosa for the Dean's Award for Excellence in Mentoring. She texted me before this event telling me that I better not make her cry. So I'm going to do my best. Um, Carla has formally mentored three undergraduate students, and she's the favorite TA of many more. She's the kind of mentor who is deeply invested in her students' growth, both as scientists and as people. I'm grateful to have experienced that same kind of deep compassion and investment as a fellow graduate student in biology, because Carla mentors across the department to other grad students as well. And she does this particularly as a founder and former chair of the biology department's graduate inclusion, diversity, equity, and anti-racism or IDEA committee. She's directly supported my development as a member of that committee, encouraging me to take the helm on projects we put together and providing assistance and feedback as I've needed it. She also mentors up to faculty, staff, and elder grad students through the various workshops and discussion groups she helps run. As a non-binary student in biology in particular, I've greatly appreciated her leadership and guidance on a project raising awareness of marginalized sexual orientations and gender identities. She's helped me navigate my first two years of the program, and through the pandemic, Carla has reached out to me frequently to see how I'm faring mentally and emotionally, in addition to seeking feedback about idea projects. Um, she's also mentored by example. In academic contexts where the very existence of diversity and inclusion efforts are contested, she operates unflinchingly to explain the value of our work and create warm, hopeful environments for other students to do the same. And not to get too meta, but Carla's even mentored me on my mentoring, um, offering specific guidance from her experience on how to read academic papers with my first and second year undergraduate students. Carla is one of my strongest peer mentors at Duke, and I am so glad to see her recognized for work that's often undervalued in research professions um, with her mentorship that's rooted in mutual respect, compassion, support, and collectivity. Buenas tardes, good afternoon to everybody. Thank you so much, Anita, for that uh, very uh, beautiful introduction. Uh, I maybe didn't cry, but that's only because I held strong. I'm speaking to you today uh, from the ancestral lands of the Shakori, the Eno, and the Tuscarora tribes. North Carolina is home to the Kohari, the Lumbi, the Meharan, the Okanichi Saponi, the Haliwa Saponi, the Wakamasuan, and the Eastern Band of the Cherokee. I want to recognize that despite centuries of violence and oppression by settlers, including stolen land, broken treaties, and forced displacement, these and other tribes continue to fight for their land and their culture. I'm grateful for this land, which is my current home, and I endeavor as best I can to care for it, for its rightful owners. Now on the subject of caring, I work with plants. And as many wiser thinkers have said before me, there is much to be learned from plants uh, and from our non-human relatives in general. And there is much that I have learned from observing and studying them. Plants like humans live in communities. Like us, they do best when these communities are diverse. They thrive when each is allowed to grow as they grow best, taking and receiving according to their different needs and skills, more water, less sunlight, rockier soil. More than ever aiming to be a mentor, I have aimed to be a good relative, both to the plants and to my peers, to recognize, honor, value, and culti cultivate our multifaceted diversity. I think that is a practice. When we see a healthy plant in the forest, we don't say this leaf is bad or this flower is wrong. We don't question whether they took up too much water or didn't grow tall enough. And I wish we'd take these lessons as well from our plant relatives when we humans are in relation with each other. In order to really succeed in this growth, however, we must learn to recognize the narrow pots that white supremacist culture wants us to fit within and work actively to break them apart shatter them with our growing roots, if you will. My thoughts may seem radical here as we celebrate mentoring and teaching. What has this got to do with it? But it is fitting, as Angela Davis told us, that radical simply means grasping things at the root. And fundamental to our growth is whether or not we are being stifled by a culture based in fear, 
hatred, and domination. You may notice my emphasis on growth. Although the platitudes tell us to always be learners, that it's about the journey and not the destination, these teachings are not usually upheld in competitive settings such as academia, where the focus instead becomes, have we succeeded? Are we renowned? Whether we have lavishly funded labs. I believe true growth is an end in itself, a lifelong dedication to challenging ourselves, something that we never complete. If we can remember perhaps growing a little bean in primary school, soaking it in a wet paper towel and watching the roots slowly emerge and the first little leaves come out, or if you have a garden or a little house plant, or if you've been outside in the spring as it is here in the Northern hemisphere, if I can ask you to remember the thrill, the joy at spotting a bright new leaf or a new flower, if we can be moved by this beauty, by this force of life, why should we not feel the same when we talk about humans? Why should a pursuit to grow and to help others in their growth not be central to how we lead our lives and to how we establish relation with each other? Thank you.